Hey, welcome to Git Credentials Binding Google Summer of Code project. It is the 7th of July, 8.30 a.m. India Standard Time. Yeah, so uh, we started, uh, Mark, we started talking about um, what uh, Harshad would have to do for his first evaluation. And I was just telling him my experience uh, because he was asking, um, does he, uh, mother, would he require Javadoc for his code? And I, and I told him that Javadoc is something that um, is a nice to have uh, feature for maintainability purposes. Yeah, but but um, uh, I was more talking about uh, my my experience that uh, what Harshit and I was just saying that what Harshit would have to do is to prepare a demo, a short demo along a company with a presentation, which essentially would um, give his progress uh, to uh, the Jenkins community. So um, I, I believe I'm not missing anything, Mark, there, right? For the oh, that's that's correct. So so what you Harshit, what you'll present is about a 15 minute, uh, 15 minute um, minutes of slides uh, and demonstration. And then five minutes of Q question and answer. And that'll be during a, a CDF webinar. Uh, you should have received a request from Cara Delamarc. Have you have you received that request, or do I need to remind her that she needs to send that out? Through the mail? Yes. No, I'm received any request okay interesting all right so i'll i'll so she was she it will be the week at see it will be the week after oh the week of july 19. so what it is 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 the guidance was we've got we've got the uh, first evaluation uh, begins July or can be submitted first evaluation submission by the mentors can begin July 12 um, must be submitted be must be done by July 16. And we didn't want to to make you do a presentation while we we're in first of in getting our first evaluation submission so we'll do it the week of July 19 and it's not sure if it will be Tuesday the 20th Wednesday the 21st usually it's one of those but she's she's working through that right now and what you'll do is you'll present um there will be six projects presenting each allotted 20 minutes with that 15 minutes presentation five minutes q a And that that should definitely should include a demo. <laughs> Sorry. So Harshit, I'll, I'll share my uh, present what the presentation I made for the first evaluation. I could share that uh, presentation with you just for reference. Uh, good idea. So did did that address the, the question on first evaluation phrase phase hardship? Yes. Okay. Well, uh, if I have any other doubt, I will ask on the Gitter chat or in the in our next meeting as well. Great. Okay. Very good. Yeah. So, in terms of changes in documentation, I think for the with credentials thing, we've got we have examples. 
and we have a pointer to the uh, snippet generator. So I, I'm not aware of anything else. It might be a, a nice to have, not required. Um, a two minute video or two minute, two minute screencast, two minute screen recording showing, showing it, showing the, yeah. For instance, it could show freestyle and could show pipeline. But that is absolutely not required. And uh, I'd much rather you work on code than work on screen recordings because that's something I can do or others can do. So I think the changes in documentation are done. At least in the Git client plugin uh, implementation we have currently. So you'd need to bring them over into the into the Git plugin. Mm, yes. So I'm going to change this to no changes required in documentation. Now we do need one of the things we need is we do need need to um, review and merge the Git client plugin. API change, right? And it would be best if we could um, release it as well. Now we can show you how to, you can consume an incremental if we need to um, without much difficulty. We can show you how to do that. If for some reason there's something that causes to say, oh, we're not ready to release that, it's easy to, to use an incremental as well. And let me get that PR number. That was 700. There we go. That's this one. Good, okay. to discuss uh, if we if you want that shift from git client plugin and git plugin mm -hmm. yes i think that's this one right isn't that this this question mm -hmm. or do yes. you want to do it as a separate topic um it was motivated by this uh, question only so i, I think it should be okay I'm sorry, go on, Mark. I, I think I interrupted you. No, no, you go ahead. So at the time when I was investigating um, the Git tool resolution, actually, uh, Harshit raised a, a good point yesterday, which I actually failed to uh, notice while I was doing the investigation that um, there, there is a, there's a principal difference between uh, the context of the binding and what I was saying in the Git plugin. Uh, so uh, uh, at the Git plugin level, the Git tool resolution depends upon a name, and that is the user's choice or the default installation. It could be anything, but there there is a name which is passed to the resolution, and 
and and in Harshit's case, what we have is the run context. That is the context we have, and that's it, right? We don't have anything else except that. We don't have the name of the Git tool. So, um, if we cannot, so I have not um, have not actually looked at the run. Um, what what all it encompasses? I have not checked that. But uh, Harshit, would we get the Git tool name by any chance from that object? Mm, yes, we can get the Git tool name, but there will be all the two Git tool names. Like it it will it will be an array of Git tool names. It will be not a specific one that the user wants for the purpose. Okay. Uh, that's correct. Why would the run? So, so the run object does not have a an explicit SCM object or an array of SCM objects. Okay, I have to see. I would believe that it would have. So, if it does mark, if it does contain a, um, a SCM object, that means that the SCM object would have the associated Git tool as well. I would think so, yeah, but I, I haven't looked at it with a debugger to be sure. So, so the the run object, what's what's actually on it, I'm I'm not I'm not immediately familiar with it. Yeah. So so the the reason why I uh, I, I started that discussion that uh, we should uh, reconsider our choice of placing the binding at the Git client plugin was that I uh, the way I was seeing. Uh, build information being passed in Git plugin, and Git client plugin did not have that kind of information anywhere. That kind of uh, was a hint that uh, this sort of code should be placed within the Git plugin instead of the Git client plugin, which serves as a utility in the Git, Git plugin. Uh, so, but but then the, the very foundation of uh, my assumptions are right now challenged by uh, by what Harshit pointed out yesterday, that um, his git2 resolution does not depend on the git2 name. So, so that brings me to the question then, is, is the binding, as a binding, is it my responsibility to resolve a git2? I, I actually, uh, I think we need to I'm, I'm not sure if that's the, that's something that we need to um, do as a binding. What, what is the harm in choosing what we have, the default installation, let's say? Ah, okay. So, so have I have I understood your question? Should the credentials binding accept an optional Git tool name? Um, Mark, if it does, who provides that information? Uh, the user, I would think, right? So okay, as a oh, as a parameter, okay. right? So, isn't it? I mean, today, what they provide is, let's see, let me bring up the documentation, and today the the example shows with credentials, get username password, and it takes a single argument today, the credential ID. If it took an optional additional argument, here, I'll just paste it like this. So today it does this. Right, oops. Okay, just as we do that in, in the SCM, when we're creating an, a Git SCM, we do that too, right? We, we ask for the Git tool name. Something like that is that uh, I, I hadn't considered that, but I think it's an interesting idea. So when I'm building uh, a Git SCN, uh, when I'm trying to check out a repository, at that point I I do fill in that in, as a user I am expected to know the name of the Git tool I have chosen. Well, well, you have the option of giving a Git tool, and if you don't give the Git tool. It's assumed it will take default, or 
or it's assumed it will take the first in your in your selection. So if, if, if the global configuration lists command line get first, it will choose that. If the global con configuration lists J get first, it will choose that. But was that was that answering your question, Rishab? Yes, Mark. I just I, I was I wanted to ask that question because uh, I, I was just thinking if the you should we place that responsibility to a user to know the get tool or not. But then since that that is already something that is uh, is an expectation from a user, it's optional. It doesn't. It's not a mandatory um, requirement, but it's optional. But then we can extend the same thing in this uh, binding context as well, right? I think so. Yeah, um, Harshit, what do you think? Would as you've as you've wrestled with the complications of resolving the Git tool, if we would it make it better for you if it were an optional parameter from the user? Well, I thought of this actually oh. yesterday, but I think that the user need not to. I just want to make things simple for the user. Mm -hmm. They are there. They just just select the, uh, the the credentials and thus the work is done. They don't have to do anything else. And, I just and, want that. I want. Yeah. And I think that that should be the default mode, right? I think we should absolutely make Git tool entirely optional. So if we were going to add Git tool, it should be optional. I I don't know that we need to add it, but if we were going to, it should for sure be optional because. We don't want them to think about it in the main case where they've only got command line git. They say, I'll take command line git, whatever I've got. Yes, and Harshit, so what you're saying means is I think there's a trade off. So either you can, um, for, for users and say convenience, you would have to iterate through all. I'm looking at a code and you would have to iterate through all of the new. Uh, tools in a node and then you would have to find a particular git tool and then check if that git tool is applicable for that node or not and then provide that if it's an agent if it's a controller then you're uh, then you're looking for all the tool installation then find trying to find a git tool type of an installation right yeah no it, it's not ever traversing all the git tools it's just finding the first git Tool of first tool of type git tool. In in both of the cases. Yeah, in both the cases, it's similar to the uh, git resolve. On but the git resolve can traverse the whole list because it is name specific rather than type specific. So if the name is in the last, but yeah, it the difference comes to the same. Like if the both the tools are in the last, git tools are placed in the last. So they will have to traverse all the lists since it's you know it's a linear complexity. So the difference is same, I think, in the complexity case of both the implementations. The only problem I think that would have is that for each installation you're trying to find, it's going to in actually install it for a node, which which is the problem which I have seen with the git. And so I also had a same similar situation in git to choose a uh, it's it's a class i created last on my project and i had to decide uh, uh, i had to decide which uh, which git tool should we choose uh, should we recommend and I, but i had the user's choice so i was doing what resolve git tool was doing um, but I, I i am iterating through uh, through the git tool list so my my question is that um, achha, so you think that we should not tell the use we, the user the user should not be concerned with it, and uh, we should be able to get it. But then let's say we have the binding, and um, in a pipeline we are going to. Do we run the risk of doing this twice? Because at the SCM level, the resolve get tool will try to find a tool, and then we are going to do the same thing. After that, uh, I don't think so. We have a risk of running it twice. No. Well, it first if it, it will figure out where the agent is running. If it's running on the, it's no type, 
then it will run the node type code. If it's a controller type, then it will run the controller type code. So. No, my question is that since the, so as you've also, also said, we, we have similar implementation in Resolve Git tool, right? So yeah. Resolve Git tool is going to work uh, when Git SEM is going to be evoked. It's it during the initial processes of a pipeline. And your binding is going to be placed after that for for a case. I'm, I'm just I'm just giving you a case where uh, the first the tool is going to be resolved by Git tool, resolve Git tool by uh, because um, because of the Git SCM, and then it comes to your code, and then it again goes for the same resolution. So we're doing the same. Won't we be doing the same thing twice? The resolution part. You may have a different way of doing it. The resolution has a different way of doing it. But essentially, both of them, how do they validate if a node contains the right Git tool? They, they install it. And that's how they validate it, right? Yeah. That is the cost of uh, validating the right Git tool. The search is linear, but Installation is what the time we have to consider. And, and it's a trade-off. I am not saying that we cannot do that. Mm -hmm. I'm just, uh, just thinking out loud. Is it is it a trade-off? Do we want users' convenience? Um, yeah. No, I think, yeah. I think, Rishabh, you have a point. Uh, so, so the example that I have in my mind is, so if in a freestyle job, we are performing a Git checkout, so it will use the Git resolve tool to find the tool, Git, uh, Git tool, right? And after that, when we are performing the using our, my binding in the batch script, so we are performing again that thing, but using a type specific implementation of the same Is that right, Ashim? Yeah, and also in a multi-branch project as well, right? Uh, the result gate tool works yeah. there as well. Uh, so yeah, I think Rishabh has a good point. I think we don't want users convenience. <laughs> we will work. We want the less, uh, you know, less computation time. Yeah. Then, so then, then the next question is that how do you share that information? Let's say we don't want so it. I will. I think we will need from the user only. Hmm, because the bindings context is independent. Of... Actually, I I don't I I have I don't have an answer. I don't know. I have never looked at the code at that level. The context which is presented to the binding. Does it contain um, what is that? Like, like, as Mark mentioned, that it, if it contains the SCM objects, then that means that it would have um, the Git SCM object which is executed. I'm actually, I don't know, I'm just at this point, I'm guessing. Um, Maybe that's an exploration. Um, so, what is our timeline right now? And uh, we have our evaluation. Right now. So, uh, Mark and Harshit, uh, what what is the uh, what was the plan for our uh, release for this feature? So, good question. So, the the release plan that we had originally discussed was deliver username password. Uh, during phase one, uh, so let's say release during phase one, and then release SSH during phase two. 
but but again, I'm okay if we say no. We've decided against that. There's we need to do some more work. Uh, for me, I've for for instance, I'm not ready to release the current username password because freestyle projects still don't work for me, and I I don't know don't work for Mark, and I haven't had the time yet to to understand why because they do work for for Harshit. Pipeline projects work great. Do we have a unit test? Uh, do we have an automated test case? To, um... Yes, yes, we do actually. At least for, I think we have an automated test case, case for freestyle. Uh, we don't have a pipeline automated test, but we know how to write one. There are pipeline automated tests that would illustrate it in the uh, Git plugin. So we, and I, I can't explain why it fails in my in my installation, but works in the automated test. Okay, so I, I think we, we have some time um, to explore that explore the options. So uh, the users option is, I think, uh, uh, right now, what is the most plausible direction we could take. I just want to also see if the context which is being provided to the binding is something which we can use to get it. Because the user has already chosen the get tool once. Can we use that information? If, if not, then um, I think it, it, the cleaner approach is to ask the user only for a get tool. And then, Harshit, I think it becomes easier for you, right? If you're working in the Git plugin environment, you just have to use the invoke the Git utils, uh, resolve Git tool, or default to the uh, default installation, right? Yeah. So, Rishab, did I capture what you were describing correctly there? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, Harshit. Oh, go ahead. What was your question, Harshit? Um, so, if um, I'm just hypothetically making an assumption, so uh, if there is no SCM object in the instance, then uh, then there will be git tool name run twice. Resolve, sorry, git resolve tool name will be run twice. I think so. Yes. That is so I think that comes to the same scenario. Same we situation. were not using the, not taking the input from the user. Yeah, and and I would guess resolving twice is still much cheap, much um, cheaper time-wise than um, any Git command line Git operation, right? Mm -hmm. Even to the local disk because. Resolving the yes, resolving Git tool is just Java code in memory. Whereas as soon as we call command line Git, we're forking a process and talking to disk drives. And so I, I'm not, I'm actually not overly worried if we we end up resolving the Git tool twice. That I, the performance impact will be n below our ability to detect it. Now, if, if, if it does do an unpack and there are many tools defined, that would be different, right? And Rishab, I think that was what you were saying, is that the resolve git tool, when we, when we were working with it last year, we had a scenario where we were actually installing the tool multiple times in order to resolve it. 
test mark and the problem was that i was um, i was fetching all the tools get tools and then i was resolving each of them one by one to see uh, which one is applicable for my case and i i think at that point it was uh, unpacking the installations and installing them for a do Okay. Yes. Um, so we're assuming that uh, the get uh, the binding is going to be placed in the get plugin now. All of this is being done uh, under that assumption. I think so. Could you say that again? I'm not sure I heard everything. I think you said something about binding assumed to be happening inside the context of the get plugin. I was saying that RB. then shifting the code for the binding to the git plugin and no, that was so. that was my assumption and harshit have you found something which would say no we should not switch the implementation into the git plugin not yet okay and have you have you actually started that move or is it is it still pending i've started it very good okay great so we should we we will probably then know very soon if that's if you hit some unexpected terrible problem that tells us oh that's not going to work mm. also i was thinking so if we have a choice of taking input from the user then why not take the the git version name version input from the user as well why are we using the command line git i mean the command line option oh oh good question right okay so um and i had assumed that we didn't want to depend on the user knowing what the version was of the of the of command line git but it's a, you've got a good point so so if we if we rec, if we accept an optional git tool parameter should we also except an optional get version parameter rather than asking command line git for its version is that what you're asking yes yeah and so for me it was just a matter of convenience for the user so that they could call the thing git and not have to worry which version it is and if, if as an example when that would be a bad problem um mark's installation has the default tool and on centos 7 it is git 1.8 on ubuntu on debian 10 it is git 2. Seven, I think, on my Ubuntu eighteen with custom installation, it's Git two dot thirty two. On Windows, it's Git two dot thirty two. And so, in that case, a Git version, I wouldn't know how to answer the answer that value because the same job could execute on any one of these, and I don't know which one of them it's going to execute on. Oh yes. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. If we choose the agent type to any in the pipeline. Right. If I said agent any, or if I said agent Linux, Linux has oh. this wide variation, right? Or if I said um, Linux or FreeBSD, or Linux or FreeBSD or OpenBSD, any of those.
So I'm prone to say don't, we wouldn't take CLI, we wouldn't, we would not want to stop asking CLI get for its version because that question has to be done on the agent where we're doing the work. There we go. Okay. Any any other questions, Harshad? No. See, have you ever used incrementals, Harshad, in in a Jenkins plugin? I assume not. No. Okay, so see let me get include a link here so that you know how to do that so that you're you're not blocked waiting for a release of the git client plugin let me find that jenkins use incrementals incremental in development incrementals developing components in parallel here we go see incrementals Developing components in parallel. Or instructions to develop to use the Git client API, the new Git client API before Git client plugin is actually released. There we go. So that hyperlink will help you. The page looks like this. Developing components in parallel, creating a pull request, obtaining the version number, et cetera. And then instead of Jenkins.version, you would put that version in the Git client section of the, of the Git client dependency inside the Git plugins palm.xml. And there may actually be something about how to do it with plugins. Nope, it looks like just that one. And and I think the the Git client API is simple, addition is simple. We can release it quickly. So I don't think that we don't need to let that be a barrier for you. Okay. Anything else? No, 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 no I don't, don't think so. No. Okay. And Harshit, uh, given where you're at in terms of implementation, I'm assuming we probably want to meet again on Friday to be sure that we talk. Yeah. Is that good? Okay, so plan to meet again on Friday. Review progress. Prepare for, for end of phase one. Prepare to complete phase one. Great. And just as a word of warning, Mark's grandchildren will be visiting that day. It may be noisy. I have shared the uh, presentation with uh, my 
case for an evaluation presentation with the ship. Let oh, me very good. If you have any doubt uh, around that. Thanks, Rishab. Thanks very much. Anything else we should review before we close for today? So for the SSH binding, I have, so I have created the, no, so it's working for keys with, which are not in open SSH format and which are not in, which are encrypted by passwords. Oh, very good. But you, uh, so, and using a passphrase. Yeah, both uh, with a passphrase or without a passphrase. That's great. Also, I am working on the, you know, SSHJ SS library to uh, to create the implementation for open SSH format key with password and without passwords. Well, I have created it, but I have getting a few errors, but I think they will be resolved in a few days. Very good. And you're fine with the using the SSJ library version, right? Because I, I remember now that you have a question on the uh, chat. Mm, yeah, I'm good with that. The, I just wanted to, I mean, I wanted the Bouncy Castle API plugin of Jenkins to have open SSH key implementation as well. I mean, it only has implementation for PEM formatted keys or keys which are in P other formats. Uh, one was P C K S eight something like that. So mm -hmm. I think since the open SSH format is pretty new and should be implemented. But currently Bouncy Castle uh, they, they the team themselves have admitted that they don't uh, support uh, passphrase protected open SSH private key or decryption. Right. Yeah. I mean, no, uh, uh, I'm saying Bouncy Castle API plugin for Jenkins. I want to add support in that. What you want to do is you want to do the same thing which SSJ library is doing. Because I, I assume that they also have uh, a custom implementation built upon the Bouncy Castle APIs. No, they are not using the Bouncy Castle API. They have created their own implementation from the scratch. I think so. Bouncy Castle APIs, uh, the class they used in Bouncy Castle API uh, have a limited scope. They, so they don't have used that. They have created their own implementation from scratch. From what I have seen. Okay, I, I think I was under the wrong impression that they have modified the implementation. And then make it no, no, no. So what you're saying is that it, you want to do the same thing for the Bouncy Castle API plugin? Yeah, in Jenkins. I, I, I'm not sure I understand that. So you're, the, the, the Bouncy Castle API plugin is just a, a copy of the Bouncy Castle API published as a Jenkins plugin. Are you suggesting you're going to extend the Bouncy Castle API in some way that's not using some portion of Bouncy Castle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're planning to submit a, I, I would expect them to reject that. So let me say what I think I heard. So proposing to add a non Bouncy Castle API to the Bouncy Castle API plugin. Yeah, to support open SSH format. Ah, okay, but and I would expect them to just say say no because what they will say is no, just create a new plugin, create a a different plugin that provides that new API. Oh, yeah. 
because because the one of the things these API plugins do is they just present the API of the plugin, at least as far as I understand it. But you could certainly oh, yeah. check with the maintainers of the Bouncy Castle API plugin just to be sure. But um, I would assume just inside inside the Git plugin just depend directly on the SSHJ library. Yes. The SSH implementation for in our case will depend on the SSHJ library. It will. Okay. So that I'm not I'm sure I'm understanding. Of... Oh, go ahead. It's just something I'm thinking of after I have completed the G Shock. I see. Okay. All right. So so then what you might do is hey, offer a pull request all the way to the upstream bouncy castle API saying, hey, here's support for open SSH format. Okay. Because because that certainly is also very valuable. If we've got time available and you could submit to them, all the better. Uh, I wouldn't attempt to put it inside the Bouncy Castle API plugin. I would rather just ask them to include it in, in Bouncy Castle itself. If you've got, if it turns out we have capacity for you to write that code, that would be great. It would be really cool for a Google Summer of Code project to submit something to Bouncy Castle. Mm. Anything yeah, else the, then? Oh, go ahead. No, nothing. That, that's all for today, I guess. Rishab, anything else from you? All right, thanks everybody. I'll end the call and upload the recording probably in the next 30 minutes or so.